Editing, like many other skills, takes practice to build a sense and style. There are many very important skills and techniques to learn. Here are my top eight that I find myself using over and over again, regardless of the type of content I'm working on. The first tip I call is arrive late and leave early. And I'm not talking about clocking in at work. It's more cutting the fluff. Every clip in your sequence should only be as long as it absolutely needs to be. Think of it this way. You want to arrive at a party fashionably late. Ooh, the party has arrived! Just when it starts to get good. But you want to leave early just as the best part is over. If you arrive too early, then you'll have to wait for the good part to start and you'll get bored. Just like an audience would if they're watching a clip before the important part of the clip starts. And likewise, you don't want to stay too long at a party because then it starts to get boring when nothing is happening. That's a pretty lame party. So you have your full clip and the best part is somewhere in the middle. The beginning and the end is usually stuff that isn't relevant to moving the story forward. And your goal as an editor is to find that sweet spot of the clip that works best for your story. That's how you should look at every clip in your sequence. Cut in just before the good stuff starts and get out as soon as it's over. There are definitely exemptions to this rule. For example, if you need to build boredom into a character or the waiting is part of the journey of the character. It all depends on the story that you're building. But as a general rule, you wanna arrive late and then leave early. When in doubt, cut it out. If a clip in your sequence is not really working, get rid of it. Or if you don't know if it's really adding anything to the edit, cut it out or save it and put it aside to see if it works without it. In general, condensing usually helps move the story along, as long as it still makes sense and the viewer can follow along. Cutting out clips and full sequences has the potential to strengthen the story. It is called editing after all, not editing. Lead the viewer's eye. Mad Max is a masterclass in showing how this works. George Miller and the editor, Margaret Sixel, really worked to make sure that in the phonetic, fast-paced editing of Mad Max, the viewer never felt like they were lost. They tried to center up all the cuts in the middle. So regardless of how fast they were editing and how fast the action was happening, the viewer was able to follow along very clearly. And there are numerous examples of characters shifting their eyes, looking to one side, and then cutting to that side, because that leads the audience to that. So whenever you're editing, make sure before you edit to the next shot, the viewer knows that it's coming to that side. Try to frame up the shot before to have the viewer easily move to the new location. Be it with camera pans, be it with an animation, be it with just reframing the whole shot. The goal is to lead the viewer's eye to the next shot. Because having the viewer jump from one side of the frame to the other too much, information will be lost. So depending on the kind of content you're working on, use animations, do something to notify the viewer that this is the important part where they need to be looking as the next shot is coming in. And with every edit that I work on, as I go through different passes, I look for where my eye is focusing and if it's jumping from shot to shot, across the frame too often. If it is, then I try to smooth that out or massage it to have a better flow of leading the viewer's eye from shot to shot. Show, not tell. And I've said this over and over again, with every opportunity, try to communicate visually instead of having the viewer told what they need to be seeing, feeling, hearing. Use B-roll, use inserts, make it a story. Use more than one shot in a sequence to really emphasize what you're trying to communicate. And the main thing that you should be thinking about with every edit that you're working on is why is this shot in here? Is it moving the story forward? Is it essential to what is being communicated? The best directors use insert shots and B-roll to help communicate and to foreshadow things that are important and will be important later in the story. So when you're watching something, if, you, if there's a random cutaway that has nothing to do with the story that you're trying to tell, just because you have a beautiful shot does not mean that it automatically gets a spot in your edit. Double up on action. What this means is very simple and it's usually a few frames, but if you're working on an action sequence, be it anything, something where one action is happening in one shot and that action continues in the next shot, try to add a few extra frames of the same action into the next cut. So wherever the outgoing shot ends, try to backtrack a couple frames of the incoming shot to make sure that the audience 
caught that because with every edit, think of it as a blink. When you blink, you can miss something. So you wanna add in a few of those frames back into your edit to make sure that the viewer did not miss the entire action. And yes, even as annoying as it sounds, sometimes one frame can make all the difference. So double up on the action across an edit, be it a jump or a punch or an explosion, but don't go overboard with it. Adding in a few extra frames to extend the action can make all the difference. It has become a joke in action movies that the explosion would repeat several times over and over again. And mainly this was because the producers and the director wanted to show off how much money they spent on that explosion. They would show it in multiple camera angles all at once because it extends the explosion and makes for more action. Doesn't necessarily make it great, but it's fun to watch. Take breaks. Make sure that you walk away from an edit. This will give you fresh eyes when you come back. You'll be able to see the edit in a way that you wouldn't have noticed trying to plow through it all in one sitting. 15 minutes, a coffee break, a day, overnight, anything to walk away from an edit to be able to walk back to it and watch it as though you're watching it for the first time. If you've ever worked on Photoshop files or color grading, you know the phenomenon is exactly the same where you're looking at something, you think it's fantastic, but then you step away and you come back an hour later and you're like, Ugh, what was that? It's the same thing with edits. The mind is very powerful and it'll start ignoring things that it has seen over and over again. It will completely bypass and jump over mistakes and things that aren't working because it is familiar. Walk away and the longer you can make it, the better. And try to do that with every subsequent pass because the places where you can fix it will jump out like sore thumbs very quickly and you'll be surprised how often this will happen. Flip the edit. And it's exactly what it sounds like. I have a preset where I add onto an adjustment later which literally flips the edit and removes the color. I use this on scenes and sequences that I feel are not working and I want to have a fresh perspective and I don't have the opportunity to walk away from the edit for too long. And this can, in a pinch, trick the brain into seeing it differently to give you that new perspective on the edit. And if you can combine flipping the edit and walking away, that'll give you a new way to watch the sequence to give you the freshest pair of eyes on it. This is probably the most important one, but also the most non-glamorous one. Watch all the footage. It's boring as heck. Watch it all. Make your notes, organize. This boring slow step can be the difference between a meh edit and one of the best ones. I've been stuck on sections and literally have no idea what can fix it. But having done my due diligence, the right shot will usually pop into the front of my mind, but it's because I loaded it in there beforehand. Having watched all the footage, the mind stores all this. The mind has a great way of solving problems, but you have to have done the prep work to be able to access that. And trust me on this, as silly as this one sounds, it's probably one of the best tips because they say championships are won in practice, not in the game. Knowing the fundamentals is crucial, but sometimes the software can make the process easier. And in this video, I talk about how to choose the software that's gonna work best for you. As always, thanks for watching.